Thank you. Hi, everyone. My name is Jenks. I'm a developer advocate at Filecoin Foundation. Uh, so I work in a working group called Ecosystem Working Group between Protocol Labs and Filecoin Foundation. Uh, this is a working group that helps to drive Filecoin's network goals. There are about three goals in, uh, in the network that we drive. First is we need to increase the capacity of the network. So Filecoin is a project that encourages bare metal buildup of infrastructure um, to provide for Web3 applications and also Web2 in the future. Um, the, um, we are trying to encourage uh, uh, professional IT companies uh, or uh, other companies who are really interested in uh, providing storage uh, to set up um, uh, nodes to, to provide storage. Um, they, they are typically investing uh, a lot of um, uh, capital and also uh, in equipments um, and financially uh, to provide uh, for, the, for the new internet that we're trying to create. Uh, so storage providers are actually uh, businesses that are trying to make a profit in doing this venture, and Falcon is incentivizing these activities uh, to build up. The second goal is to, um, is to attract uh, storage clients to the network. So we have onboarded uh, data from uh, NASA, for example, and UC Berkeley that Clara mentioned a little bit earlier today. Uh, so these type of clients, we're trying to attract and onboard the data to Filecoin network that the providers are providing. The third part is the area that I work on, which is uh, developer adoption of our technologies. Now Filecoin and IPFS across these two ecosystems, we have a lot of technology to, for developers to build their application on top of. Uh, there are a lot of primitives, Web3 or non-Web3 related, um, and there are also a lot of services uh, that developers can use. So today I hope to introduce a couple of them uh, to you, uh, and on behalf of this team, I'm advocating for them. So I, my job is uh, quite enjoyable for the last one and one and a half year. Uh, I've been uh, going around the world and also online to talk to a lot of developers out there, to tell them about uh, the decentralization of the web the decentralized storage network that we have built up, and a lot of protocols that we have created. Uh, a lot of developers are very receptive of this concept. Uh, it's easy sell to the developers um, because they sort of realize the issues with centralization and how, how the internet runs today. Uh, so on behalf of Saturn team and also Titan network today, uh, I would like to introduce you the Filecoin decentralized CDN network. Uh, Filecoin, um, so th this will last about 20 minutes. I know my speech is between um, is, is, is in front of lunch, so I'll cut this uh, this uh, this short and finish on time. So um, Saturn team couldn't be here today. They have another panel in a different conference, uh, and Titan team um, is, uh, uh, is one of the representatives here today. But I'll talk uh, to the project. So uh, let me tell you a little bit about CDN network uh, business. Uh, it's called content delivery networks. It is the reason why we're watching YouTube videos and loading websites a lot faster, uh, even though the company's main server or origin server in CDN terms uh, is sitting uh, across the ocean on the other end of the earth. Uh, so CDN network brings content, popular contents like websites, images, and videos uh, to closer to you so that you can retrieve it or uh, read it from your local servers instead of um, going through a very long cable and relying on um, the uh, telecommunication to, to achieve that. Uh, so it is a huge market. The CDN market is, uh, is going to achieve uh, 95 billion um, US dollars in 2020, 2030. It's projected to have a 23% growth every year. So it is, not a, um, it is not a market that we can ignore. And it, it represents a big chunk of, um, um, uh, of our internet infrastructure. Some of the key players, Akamai, Cloudflare, and uh, Amazon uh, CloudFront, and Fastly are in play, um, and they grab a, a quite a bit of, bit of market share uh, for each. So for example, the company that I used to work for, uh, we pay a very uh, big bill to Fastly every, every month uh, to be able to serve web pages that we have built for influencers much quicker. Um, when I was at that company, they had about 12 million, uh, 12 million users, so that's 12 million websites that they need to maintain and serve really fast. Uh, and along with, the, with those websites, their fans actually click on their profile quite a bit. Uh, so, so that amounts to a lot of traffic. They actually have a pretty good ranking on uh, Alexa 
uh, index uh, when it was around. Uh, I think there were like 26 ranked uh, websites. So therefore, it caused uh, a lot of uh, content to be consumed by all around the world. And one way to accelerate that is to uh, ask Fastly to help uh, cache those content like profiles, you know, HTML files, CSS files uh, around the world uh, so that local customers can uh, load it in sub-second uh, speed uh, or just in 50 or 100 milliseconds. Um, but these key players are, um, are all um, single entities. So that means uh, if they go down business, they need to shut down their infrastructure, and that will impact a lot of lives of different applications. Um, in fact, where I came from in Australia, Akamai had an outage uh, about two years ago, uh, I think pre-pandemic, and that knocked down a lot of websites, also Facebook, uh, quite a bit of that, and people start calling the police because their social network went down. Um, they couldn't do anything. But it turns out it, not just, it didn't just um, impact the entertainment side of the internet. A lot of uh, vital businesses and services also rely on uh, CDN network to function. Uh, so many backend systems actually use CDN network to also cache the API results that their uh, backend server relies on. So as a result, uh, during that outage, a lot of government services was down and also banking services such as credit card systems and FPOL services. So our internet runs on it. We can't live without it. Uh, that's the point. It is very difficult to build a CDN network. CDN network needs to be very efficient. So it needs to beat the performance of the origin server um, and have a presence locally. Uh, it needs to be secure. So if something uh, or someone tried to attack it, for example, starting a DDoS attack, then it needs to withstand it and deal with it. It needs to be highly available as well because um, uh, you don't want a CDN network that does not deliver. So you need to implement some kind of a logic to, to, be, able to, um, to, be, to be able to distribute the load uh, in a very smart way. So a funny thing is actually uh, in my last company, we had uh, two outages, um, uh, but the CDN network sort of saved us because the content was actually cached uh, locally in different regions. So the user did not experience any outage while backend services was actually down a couple of times. So it needs to be highly available and it needs to be optimized because um, uh, to reduce the logistics that it needs to communicate with each node. So smartly distribute this content. Now, we have something common in this world. Uh, it's called Web3, and crypto economics is highly uh, intertwined with, with this concept, and it is rewiring the internet. Some of the talks that was given today was literally about how we push that forward on the storage side, so how do we get data into the system. Now, the CDM project is about getting that uh, out of it. So we're trying to build a decentralized uh, CDM network to serve those content that's being stored in storage provider uh, facilities. Now, there's a few attributes that you need to meet uh, as a decentralized system. First of all, you can't have a single point of uh, failure or a single point of coordination that is vulnerable to attacks or downtimes, like I mentioned earlier. Uh, you need to have, um, uh, you need to replace those centralized versions of it. Uh, you need to also be trustless. So people don't need to know who you are or rely a lot on you, on, on, on what you did before or your reputation. Uh, it should come in, understood, and verify your work and be able to, be able to uh, sort of use the services without worrying about you doing a bad job or doing a dishonest job. Uh, it also needs to be permissionless so people can come in and out uh, freely. So our storage provider uh, network uh, you can join the business, you need to stake a bit to ensure that you have financial incentive to stay in the business, but also when that is done, uh, you can feel free to leave the network as well. Um, so this, this means that we ha you always have a group of people joining the network, you also have a group of people leaving the network, and that's okay, it's a dynamic system. A dynamic system typically will uh, survive much longer, like an, economic, like an economy will survive much longer than, than a company. Uh, it also, typically, uh, a crypto project is open source and it develops faster because you have access to a lot more talent. You don't have to hire those people. Um, and uh, you have many eyes over an open source project. So presumably, it is, uh, theoretically, it is uh, more secure. Um, people argue uh, that a lot, and we're still in a fight uh, against closed product and open source product. But I think open source provides a really good chance for crypto projects to develop really fast. So one of the solutions that we came up with is to build a decentralized network, a CDN network, 
that is powered by crypto economics, so we can grow it really fast. Uh, we can scale to millions of nodes globally or retract it down if it needs to. And similar to a marketplace, we shouldn't need a central management of, um, uh, of, of this, uh, this whole, ent whole network. So introducing Filecoin Saturn, uh, it is one of the projects that's been launched and it is now, right now, a network of 2,000 nodes to serve content from IPFS and Filecoin. So Saturn team's goal is to build the world's best, fastest, lowest cost CDN network, and it intends to in accelerate content from IPFS and Filecoin Web 2 and Web 3. Now, for IPFS and Filecoin content actually doesn't naturally talk to each other. This is a project that unites them together. So there's some community uh, that talks about uh, that you know IPFS content is not uh, talking to Filecoin network, and this is the project that brings it together so people can retrieve it from both. Um, and uh, it's a little bit cheesy to say, but uh, it, the project intends to unite humanity's hardware. What that means is the software is designed to run on different kinds of uh, hardware that you have. So for example, computers at home and also uh, the professional uh, enterprise service that you have in data centers. So it works on both and it really uh, allows a group of computers uh, to, to join the same uh, mission. So it will advance IPFS and Filecoin and Web3 adoption, we hope, um, and then it will democratize earnings. So anyone can spin up a node, uh, get their Filecoin wallet address, use their bandwidth to, to be, uh, and they will get, because they're doing the uh, honest work in the economy, they will get rewarded for it. So those, um, uh, those workers will work in browsers, uh, they can work on server side, and also uh, you can work with gateways for, for a little bit more performance setup. So how does Saturn do that? Uh, Saturn's architecture follows a, a quite a standard um, CDN, uh, inf CDN uh, architecture. So you have, usually for a CDN network, you will have the origin server, which has the content, uh, and then you have one layer called um, uh, a regional server that is a little bit more performant uh, services, but they sit in bigger regions. And then you have the third level, level called edge servers that actually cache a lot of small contents uh, and interface with users to, to serve. So in Filecoin, set, uh, in Filecoin Saturn's setup, IPFS network and Filecoin uh, network will be the top layer. Uh, and then Saturn has layer one nodes that acts as regional servers. And then at the, at the end, um, you have uh, Filecoin Saturn layer two nodes that runs on consumer grades, products like, like my laptop. Um, and then there's a system called Saturn Orchestrator uh, that talks to a Filecoin network of indexers that keeps track of where contents are in this uh, vastly fragmented uh, decentralized storage network and then be able to coordinate all, all these and uh, return, the, uh, return the faithful service, which is finding the files and then serve it to the clients. Um, it also has anti-fraud system built in uh, because the system needs to be able to detect bad players in ecosystem um, and then um, discourage that kind of behavior. Otherwise, you'll be, uh, the network will be overrun by those uh, malicious uh, acts. So Filecoin and Saturn is live. Yes, you can, you can test Saturn right now. So Saturn team actually launched it in October last year in Lisbon. Uh, I was at the conference as well and I heard the news. Uh, they said you could get it up and running in five minutes. Uh, so at the conference right there, I pulled out my um, laptop. I actually set it up in about 12 minutes. So for an average developer like me, I'm not a really good one. That's why I'm up here and not coding. Um, and uh, I, I was able to get it up and running in 12 minutes. I just had to get my um, Docker set up, uh, pull down the Docker image, run it, and make sure my internet is okay, and also get my Filecoin wallet address uh, to, be, to be entered into the, um, into the configuration files. Uh, so you can run uh, Saturn L1 nodes as well, but it really requires really good bandwidth. So if you want to get rewarded more, you need to get more bandwidth uh, and serve better. The, an average requirement is 10 gigabit plus, plus um, 10 gigabit at least for uploads, uh, and you need to have certain system requirements, uh, minimum s system uh, performance for running an L1 node. Now, Let's think about that uh, for a minute. In 12 minutes time in Lisbon in October, I was able to set up a CDN node or a CDN business, being a CDN business uh, in about 12 minutes. If you were to set up a business and start to build solutions for CDN and try to compete with companies like Fastly or Akamai, 
uh, it could take months at least. Just the legislation cost will, uh, will be huge for you. What Saturn has done is to allow anyone uh, to join it within minutes of time. So that's how uh, an open, permissionless, uh, and trustless system can uh, encourage a build-up of the network really quickly, more than any kind of current means we have, and also um, provide a really uh, performance system. Now, in 18 months' time, the team has done a lot of innovation in uh, this decentralized technology and increased from literally nothing to 2,200 nodes around the world, point of presence. And they're now serving uh, 78 million requests every day. And they're able to achieve 60 milliseconds time to first byte uh, performance as well in most places. So if you are not familiar with uh, this parameter, last parameter that is most important to CDN, uh, a good CDN uh, project, you need to be at around 30 to 50 milliseconds. And above 80, you start to be a slow performing CDN network. So we're kind of achieve, achieving Web2 uh, performance standards now. Some of the Saturn's updates. So Saturn now ha is going to uh, beta trial a, a customer portal. Uh, and I'll give you the link a little bit later. Whoever is interested, if you're a developer trying to use um, a decentralized CDN network to accelerate your content delivery through decentralized network, uh, then you can sign up and, and, and uh, get early access to the, to the system. Uh, they're also building a consumption metering on the network, so there's more monitoring of the network performance. Our presume is to better architect all the different resources there. They have improved routing, which contributed to better performance, and they also uh, removed a lot of fraud nodes so they've detected that people start to game the system. So they have figured out ways to actually remove those nodes and put in CID compliance checker, uh, I misspelled check uh, over there. But uh, these all contributed to better performance. It was about 180 milliseconds last time I checked last year, and now it's 64. Uh, but it varies depending on what you're trying to achieve and which region you're at. This is the beta program. You can sign up today if you're interested in that. Uh, but you, usually someone will be interested in that are people who are trying to accelerate their content, for example, video images, uh, or a developer that is trying to make their website or a content load a little bit faster. Uh, so take a look at that if you like. There are some other resources as well, including Saturn's roadmap that sometimes is a running target. Uh, so have a take a look, uh, ha have a look at that. And Saturn also has a video demo of how you can code it into your application, so you can use it right now. It's, it's to, to developers, essentially, this is a free CDN network for now, and in the future, they're going to figure out a way how to how to charge for serving those content. Now. Uh, the, one of the movies uh, lines that I remembered uh, was for sci-fi movies, if we, can, if we have the budget, uh, why don't we build two? So Titan Network is another uh, net, uh, CDM project that's funded initially by, um, by either by Protocol Labs or Falcon Foundation, uh, and it's, uh, uh, it's developed by a community member called um, uh, New Web Group. So Titan Network is an alternative to Falcon CDN. You can think of them as competing, but also complementary at the same time, because they're competing because they're both CDN network that um, serves uh, Filecoin and IPFS uh, content. Uh, they're also complementing because they're all contributing to uh, building of this CDN network. Um, the, um, the, the goal is the same there, um, so, so we don't really mind, and this is a really new thing, so if, if one of them works out, that's, that's better, so uh, that's also very good. So what is Titan? Titan's teams uh, actually have a slightly bigger ambition than just a content delivery network. Uh, they're trying to be a full-fledged uh, Web3 cloud service platform. So not only they're going to enable storage, which is what they're good at, uh, they're going to build a CDN network to allow people to retrieve, but also on top of that, they're going to run VPS services and containers uh, to, all, to allow developer host their backends or websites on top of it. So a true decentralized uh, network of computers that is able to satisfy the needs of many enterprises today. Their differences is they're trying to focus on user-friendly interfaces and tools. They're trying to win customers by building better uh, UX. And, and also, uh, they simplify the data exchange. Um, the economics is supposed to be more efficient. Um, and their UX should be similar to object storage uh, services today that a lot of customers are accustomed to. 
this is the look of the Titan storage service, which I'll demo a little bit later. But the key point is um, they, are, uh, they are also trying to promote the concept of perpetual storage and global acceleration of the download one. So on the interface, you can see uh, the files that's being stored globally, but also you can see the retrieval nodes uh, from, from their dashboard as well. Uh, they're also building privacy and, uh, and, uh, uh, and identity services. Uh, so that you can safely store your content on it and uh, you don't have to worry about uh, being, uh, data being breached. Um, and it will reduce cost and it will have uh, excellent compatibility such as, uh, with, such as uh, AWS S3 uh, or some other cloud services that's popular elsewhere in the world. Now, Titan also runs, uh, intends to run VPS services, virtual private service. Now, I work with a lot of uh, small businesses. I'm actually on the board of my uh, daughter's child care, uh, which is a uh, charity. Uh, they, they actually choose a local company to host their, uh, the uh, local company to host their uh, child care's website. Uh, and I think this is true for a lot of small and medium businesses. If they have a choice, they would rather work with smaller businesses that are local who can provide really good uh, services to them, and they don't mind. They don't mind to run on uh, a less fancy kind of cloud services. All they need is their website up. They're able to take calls. Uh, they're able to receive emails, um, and then um, and then they uh, should probably be able to run some productivity tools. Some companies will, small companies will build their C CRM uh, systems and run on their own server. Um, I've seen that before, and also uh, also be able to have their databases uh, hosted uh, locally in their premises. So working with a smaller sort of cloud provider or more local provider is an option. Uh, so they intend to empower storage uh, providers of Filecoin to be able to do the same. Uh, so they just have to install the software, run it, um, and then uh, the uh, Titan network will uh, allow them to put their kind of white label services on it, or um, Titan network as a group can, uh, can attract customers to onboard to the network so they can select services there. Uh, so some of the... Uh, so this is designed to look exactly the same as some of the services that uh, businesses use today. So they might not be able to tell that it is on Web3, it is on Filecoin, IPFS, that does not matter. We don't need them to, uh, to, to differentiate and change their behavior. They can just use it as it is, but it will be powered by uh, Filecoin. And they intend to uh, onboard uh, thousands of projects to, uh, to, this, uh, to, this, uh, to this network. A quick comparison between the two projects. Um, perhaps I should show you something first. So this is um, this is something cool that I that I discovered recently. This is um, uh, Saturn Networks Explorer. So this shows how many points they have uh, in the world. It's very satisfying to have a really big screen to show the whole world, and I'm I'm able to drag it and interact with it. So people go, "Whoa, this is very nice." So let's try to find Turkey here and see. Uh, what the network um, providers uh, are getting here. So over here, and I think that's where Istanbul is. Um, and I'm, oh, that's uh, the other city. Uh, and in Istanbul, you can see this is weekly figure. So you can see that the node operators, 13 of them, are uh, performing at about uh, 53 milliseconds time to first byte. And this week, they have served about, served about 6.7 terabytes of content from IPFS and Filecoin network. So that's 9.2 million retrieval requests. Uh, you can think of it as clicks of a website. And uh, they've earned 72 uh, fields, uh, earnings right now. Uh, and also a bit of a demo of uh, Titan Storage Network. So I just got it working uh, yesterday, uh, but the team has been working on for a while. So I can sign in with my MetaMask um, and sign as myself. This is the logging method, Web3 logging method. They also have Web2, like logging with email stuff. So right away you can see the dashboard that shows you the, the nodes that they run for storage. This is, I think, I believe this, this is all test, not production once. Uh, and then you can peek uh, through and see some network bandwidth, some performance over there. Some of the interface is still in Chinese, but the team is translating all these to, to English right now. So let's have some fun and upload some files here. So I've tested two before, and I can select some more files. And we will upload a Filecoin uh, logo um, with the symbol on it. So confirmation is still in Chinese, but the team will change it. So it's a very small file, so it can be sent over the internet very quickly uh, to their nodes. And then once it's completed, 
um, the file that I have uploaded, uh, symbol. So we can open the file right away, and you can see it's a, uh, it's a Titan node that is serving the IPFS content. And then if I want to share the file, um, so over here, share file, uh, file permission. Uh, if I confirm this, uh, I'll be able to get the link to share uh, externally. Now when I upload it, there's an option to do, uh, uh, th there's no option to do encrypted file, but uh, I heard from Yuan that the, the team is deploying some encryption services today, uh, well, uh, this week, so, so the developers can encrypt their files and then upload to IPFS, so no one can uh, sort of decrypt it easily. They can probably still retrieve it, but they won't be able to do much then. So this is a quick demo of how um, how Saturn stores content and also serve that as well. So I wonder if I can see the uh, information related. Uh, so Filecoin replica, so it takes a bit of time to actually create a replica on Filecoin network and, and uh, have that backed up, so, so that's not available yet. But that's a very quick demo uh, of, of this. So a little bit of comparison uh, about uh, Filecoin Saturn and Titan network. So uh, Filecoin Saturn runs on, uh, t the token runs on uh, Filecoin, so it's using Phil, uh, and Titan network intend to select a new token or create a new token for their network. The economic model, uh, Filecoin Saturn is focusing on overall efficiency, uh, whereas Titan network is focusing on the last mile delivery uh, of content. So more edge nodes, the bottom layer, than uh, the middle part, um, to put it uh, in a simple way. Uh, for storage, uh, Filecoin Saturn will work with IPFS and Filecoin. Titan will work with that, but more networks. So for example, uh, BNB, uh, Greenfield, and uh, Rweave, I think they mentioned earlier. And uh, Filecoin Saturn does not have compute, and Titan network intends to run VPCs and Dockers in the future. Uh, that's all from me. Um, if you're interested, please contact, take a picture of the screen and contact the responsible person here, or contact Titan net team. Thank you very much. Um, and lunch will be served uh, right now. We'll, we'll, we'll start again with our programming at about 1.30. So thank you very much.